everyone and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. So this is going to be a reading vlog of me trying to get out of a reading slump, which isn't really a reading slump. I think I'm in a bit of a genre slump at the moment because I've been reading quite a lot of fantasy over the last few months. And even though that's fine because I love fantasy, it's one of my favourite genres, I do find that when I read a lot of fantasy back to back, it does sometimes make me feel a little bit slumpy. So this week I am only going to be reading thrillers because it's spooky season, we're coming up to Halloween and I feel like I'm in the mood to be scared. So what I did last night is I put a poll on my Instagram stories and I asked people to vote for a thriller for me to read. These are all audiobooks that are available on Scribd by the way, just in case anyone was wondering, but they're also all thrillers that I've seen around or that have been quite popular recently or there's one where I read another book by this author a few months ago and I really enjoyed it. So basically I picked four thrillers and asked everyone to to vote for a book for me to read and the winner by a landslide was Rock Paper Scissors by Alice Feeney. I made a start on it this morning and I think I read the first two or three chapters and still don't really know what the main plot for this book is going to be. The blurb was quite vague but basically it's a domestic thriller so we're following a husband and wife who are on this trip to Scotland and they're staying in this very remote uh, converted church I think it is. They've been having a lot of problems in their marriage recently and so this trip is meant to be a bit of a make or break situation but from those first couple of chapters I'm getting the feeling that there's something else going on because they both seem to have ulterior motives for this trip and I don't want to say much more because I don't know much more, I'm literally three chapters in but also with thrillers I don't like to say too much but the wife works for Battersea Dog Home and then the husband is a screenwriter which I actually find that really interesting like I don't know what it is but I find it really interesting the whole concept of that he works with authors to convert books to screen. Richard Armitage is the narrator for the male voice which I really like because I like his voice <laughs> why did I say that? So I'm going to carry on listening to that probably for the rest of the week. I don't know how long it's going to take me to finish it because I think it's about a 10 hour audiobook and then alongside that I am going to pick up a physical book or an ebook. I'm charging my Kindle at the moment and then I'm going to decide what I want to read on that. I'm thinking maybe The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James because that is on my TBR for this month and I have done really badly with my October TBR so far. I have read one book from my official TBR so far this month so I need to get on that. <laughs> so I am currently 37% of the way through Rock Paper Scissors. I've got about six and a half hours left, I don't know if you can see that but so far I'm enjoying it you know. It's really creepy and I really like the narrators so there's two narrators that are doing each of the different points of view and it's definitely a good book to be reading around this time of year around spooky season because there's been a few moments that have definitely scared me. <laughs> in terms of the actual plot I don't feel like it's anything unique, it's not any different to a lot of domestic thrillers that I've read but I'm definitely intrigued because I've seen quite a few reviews that have said this has a lot of twists and a lot of turns and it goes in a few different directions and I'm definitely yeah interested to see what's going to happen. It's very gripping, when I'm listening to it I don't want to put it down and I love audiobooks like that that actually make me want to do chores and stuff because I'm that engaged with what's going on. Content warning wise the only thing I've picked up on so far is that there's been discussions around fertility and struggling to conceive so if that's something that you don't want to read about then I probably wouldn't recommend this. everyone so I am now about 60% of the way through rock paper scissors and I am enjoying it I do have a few issues that I want to try and talk through but I'm going to try not to be really really critical because overall this book is doing exactly what I expected to and I'm really liking the listening experience. I think that it's well written or well narrated. There's these two separate timelines. So you have the timeline in the present day where you're following this couple Alice and Adam I think his name is but then you also have this sort of timeline in the past 
where Alice, basically on their wedding anniversary every year, she writes her husband a letter. And through these letters, you start to see how their relationship started to fall apart. And I'm finding those chapters really, really tedious to get through. There's something that I sometimes come across in thrillers where you have a character that will be thinking something like, oh, but they don't know that I was keeping secrets from them. And sometimes that's good because it does help to build the tension. But I'm at a point now where I'm 55% of the way through and I just want it to get to the point a little bit quicker. I think that I'm going to crack on and try and finish this book today or tomorrow because I am flying through it quite quickly and then I'll let you know my final thoughts in the next clip. Hey everyone, so I finished reading Rock, Paper, Scissors last night and I'm gonna give this four stars, I think, probably more like a 3.5 because I think this is a perfect example of a book where if I'd read it physically, it probably would have come out as a three stars, but because I really, really loved the narration and I thought that really helped to immerse me in the story and really bring the emotions to life. I don't know whether emotions is the right word, but I thought that the narrators did a really good job of injecting fear into their voices at certain moments and so that definitely helped me to enjoy the book more. I did guess quite early on the direction that the plot was going in but there was a lot that happened at the end of this book and there were some things that I didn't quite predict and so I did really like that. It was definitely entertaining. I think that that is the word that I would use to describe this book overall. I can definitely see why it's been getting quite a lot of hype recently and it was exactly what I wanted at the time and so yeah four stars. I don't know what I'm going to pick up next on audio. I think I might start The Castaways by Lucy Clark, I think is the author. And I have also made a start on The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James, but I'll talk about that in the next clip. Hey everyone, so I am now about 20% of the way through The Sundown Motel. And this book is really, really creepy. I was thinking that it's probably not the best idea that I'm reading this before I go to bed, because it's really putting me on edge and I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> I don't think I actually described what the plot of this book is about, but we're basically following a young woman called Carly, whose mom has recently passed away. And her mom's sister, so Carly's aunt, Vivian, went missing about 25 years ago, no, 35 years ago, before Carly was born. And Carly has always been curious about what happened to her aunt, but her mom never wanted to talk about it. And so now that her mom has passed away, Carly decides to go and investigate and see if she can find out what happened. The book is told in this split timeline, so you're following Vivian in the past in the 1980s as she starts working the night shift at this really run down and creepy motel. But then you're also following Carly in the present as she's following in her aunt's footsteps. So this is going to be a really quick update because I'm about to go to sleep and I am tired. But I've been reading some more of The Sundown Motel this evening. I'm now about 57% of the way through. This hasn't been super twisty so far, but I don't think it's that kind of thriller. I think it's more of a slow building suspense. And now that I'm thinking about it, and now that I know that it's more of a ghost story, I am enjoying it a lot more. I have found it a little bit confusing in places because the two perspectives and the two timelines feel very similar similar, especially because the main character in the present day, Carly, she ends up working at the same motel that her aunt was working at. And so, yeah, there were a few occasions where I got certain events mixed up where I thought they had happened in the present day and that actually happened in the past. And so I think I'm through that now and I am starting to get it a lot more. There's definitely something going on with this motel. And I feel like there are certain characters that haven't revealed the full truth yet. Yeah, in general, I do really like it when you're following characters in a story that are investigating stuff and that are trying to solve a mystery and there's a lot of that in this book. Hey everyone, so I finished reading The Sundown Motel last night and I kind of want to give this five stars because I gave Rock, Paper, Scissors four stars and I did enjoy this slightly more, especially towards the end. The tension and the suspense was so, so good. Usually I do prefer thrillers that feel a little more realistic. However, once I realised that this was more of a paranormal suspense book, I did enjoy it a 
lot more and I got really into it and you know when you're watching a movie and characters are doing stuff and you're thinking no 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 why are you doing that that is a terrible idea I got that feeling a lot <laughs> during this book and it was just so so good I love books where you can picture it as a movie and where it's playing like a movie in your mind and that's what this book was for me I am also now about a third of the way through The Castaways by Lucy Clark so I think I mentioned that this was going to be the next audiobook that I was going to be picking up and I'm flying through it so far it's very gripping the tone of this book is slightly different to the other two books that I've read this week because I think that Rock Paper Scissors and The Sundown Motel are more creepy and suspenseful whereas this is more the type of thriller that I can imagine reading on holiday except that it's about a plane crash so maybe I wouldn't want to read it on holiday but I might want to read it on a beach somewhere because it has that warmer setting the story follows two sisters Laurie and Erin and you learn in the very first chapter that they're meant to be going away on holiday together however Erin never shows up at the airport because they had a bit of a falling out the night before and so Laurie decides to get on the plane by herself and you then find out that that plane disappeared and so you follow these two timelines you follow Laurie in the past where you learn what happened to this plane and then you also follow Erin in the present day which is two years later where you see how she feels really guilty because she never got on the plane and she's trying to find out desperately what happened to her sister. I think the main reason why the plot for this appealed to me is because I really loved the TV show Lost when I was a kid. Maybe not when I was a kid, maybe when I was a teenager, but the plot for this reminded me a little bit of that. And I think that's why I am preferring the past timeline to the present timeline. But also Erin as a character is very shrill and she's a little bit annoying. I mean, I know that she's lost a sister and so she's dealing with all of that. So I think I might grow to like her as the book goes on. But so far I am preferring Laurie's perspective in the past. And I do like that actually there's two narrators for this book. So that is helping to distinguish between the two points of view. Good morning. So I am now about 50% of the way through The Castaways. And so far I feel like this book had a really strong beginning and now the last few chapters, I wouldn't say that they've been boring, but also I feel like nothing is really happening. I feel like so far this book hasn't really lived up to the synopsis because I thought it would be a lot more plot driven, but so far it's mostly been character driven, which is fine. Like we're seeing the sister relationship and we're seeing through flashbacks, yeah, what their relationship was like. And then we're also seeing their individual experiences of how they're coping with this situation. It is still enjoyable, but I think I was just expecting a lot more because I haven't seen any negative reviews for this book so far and I think it was a Waterstones thriller of the month at one point but I think that I've now reached a point where we might be starting to get a little more action and where the pace is hopefully going to pick up. Hey everyone so I am here to wrap up this vlog because I finished reading The Castaways last night and I'm gonna give this three stars. It was okay. It was a little disappointing because I was so excited for this one because I thought that the premise sounded really interesting but the execution there was just something missing for me I think it's because I do tend to prefer thrillers that are a little twistier and towards the end there was a lot of build-up and then there was a reveal that I didn't see come in which I did appreciate but then it just kind of fizzled out and there were a few things actually that I guess I kind of saw come in and so they weren't really a huge shock but overall it was fine. I might have mentioned earlier that I did have a few issues with the pacing and also certain character motivations didn't really make sense and so I just kind of thought wait what why is that happening and how is that even possible and why are they doing that and it just yeah a little disappointing but I think that if you are interested in this book then I would still recommend it because I did like the audiobook narration it just wasn't for me in the end unfortunately but I think I am going to end the reading vlog here so thanks for watching if you've made it this far I don't know know how successful this week has been because Rock Paper Scissors I gave like 3.5 stars, The Sundown Motel I gave 5 stars or probably more like a 4.5 if we're being really really specific and then The Castaways I gave 3 stars. So I would say that was pretty successful. I do feel like I'm starting to come out of my fantasy slump because I have started another fantasy book. I started it 
yesterday or the day before so hopefully October no November we're in October at the moment why am I rambling hopefully I will be able to get back to some fantasy in November I am actually going to film my November TBR today so look out for that because it should be the next video that's going live after this one if you did enjoy this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below if you've read any of these books or if you've been reading any spooky books recently that you would recommend and I will see you next time bye <laughs>